the agency and the rancher has the ability to, to learn how to work together. Uh, and when you go out and collect data on monitoring, you know, you, 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 you get out on the land, you have a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, you need help doing this or doing that, and what is this for us, and you may know, she may know, he may not know, but it develops getting to know one another, and that's, that's part of the communication process, and that's, that develops trust, okay? Uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you just meet somebody today, and uh, if you just meet somebody, and that's the first time you meet them, you really don't have a relationship with them. But if you do some things with that person, you develop that trust in one another, uh, and uh, that's important, and then keep the lines of communication open. So, Getting on the ground, doing things cooperatively together on the ground, and collecting range data, monitoring on site, on the ground, it affords the opportunity for everybody to get to know one another and uh, develop the relationships. And, you know, there'll be things happening out there that'll just come out of the blue about the landscape. The rancher may say something, you know, we tried this a couple of years ago, it didn't work. And so the, uh, someone will say, well, why didn't it work? And it develops, you know, conversation. And, and that's where you develop trust with one another. And it's a two-way street. So, that, uh... so whenever we embark upon a NEPA project concerning a allotment management plan, uh, the very first person we go talk to is that, is that, is that rancher. They, generally, they've been there for a long time. They have a lot of knowledge of the ground. That is not something that, that we can replace by our files. So we meet with them, we talk with them, and we ask them what they view their ranch to be looking like in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And we try to craft a proposed action that meets the needs of them and the, and, and, and the resource. There's ongoing information collected from a, from a rancher yearly, and that information is like rainfall, uh, stocking rates, uh, ongoing monitoring that they may do, that we do. All that information plays into that proposed action. So if a rancher is getting ready to embark upon an EPA project with the Forest Service, they need to be digging out a lot of those those uh, records and make sure that, that if there's any gaps in that, that they're providing that so that we can together craft a proposed action that's the best for the resource and the ranch. There's always a need for information with NEPA and for many years in Arizona, it's been encouraged that ranchers participate in a range monitoring program. And ideally that's done collaboratively with agency employees. And Everybody chooses the key areas uh, together and they uh, collect the data to address issues that the uh, questions that may be uh, that they want to uh, ask. For instance, there may be a concern with some type of vegetative attribute on one area of the allotment or with the riparian area or some other uh, thing and uh, so Together, they can decide what kind of data is needed and then collect that. And then you can have a more informed decision as you try to develop a proposed action for NEPA. I think that something very important to do is that there be a relationship in gathering data. And so range monitoring data, trend data that have a bearing on what uh, the plan is for a particular allotment should be collected collaboratively. There should be key areas that are placed that are located collaboratively and there should be a body of evidence gathered together uh, to decide what should be done on allotment. When data is gathered uh, collaboratively there's less reason to argue because the data doesn't lie the interpretation may differ between two individuals, but the data tells the same story, whoever gets it. So uh, one problem that I uh, was involved in early on, about 1999, 2000, was on the Greenback allotment. And uh, this allotment had uh, permitted livestock, about 150, 200 heads, something like that. Uh, due to a few concerns, it was recommended that either all the livestock be removed or that the rancher be allowed 19 head of livestock on 20,000 acres. 
which was ludicrous in my opinion. Uh, the reason for this was there was really no data to back this up. This was based on a computer model that uh, an agency employee was pushing and because of some concerns in some areas where livestock weren't properly distri distributed, then there was overuse in some areas of allotment. So what the permittee and, and myself did was we approached the Forest Service and we suggested that they let us collect uh, data over a year or two and in partnership with them and try to gather information to see more what was going on. And uh, this we did and at the conclusion of that two year period we presented our data to the Forest Service, a group of people and some of them were on the district, some of them were involved with NEPA. And at that time it was decided that 85 head of livestock could be on that permit and that they would continue to monitor the permit over every year and, uh, and make adjustments as necessary. And so uh, that uh, was the beginning, but with time, uh, the more reasonable numbers were able to get out on the permit. The biggest reason for the problems was that there was really no cross fences in the allotment. There was one small uh, holding pasture in the middle of the allotment, but there were not uh, ways to manage the livestock, so they went wherever they wanted and stayed as long as they wanted. And so the permittee was able to get a few more fences in, was able to practice more proactive management, and we've seen conditions improve dramatically on the ground. And uh, so based on the success of that, we started the Read and Range program, and so uh, that has been the goal of that program is to collect data collaboratively and use that data to assist in NEPA decisions. And so I think in some respect that has happened over the past few years. Uh, some of the more recent allotment management plans, some of the recent NEPA documents that I've uh, viewed uh, have shown a more collaborative, flexible approach to land management based upon monitoring information. You know, at the beginning of the NEPA process, whether it's for a small project on your ranch or, or the ranch NEPA itself to reauthorize grazing, you, uh, the rancher needs to go in to the government agency, be it BLM or Forest Service, that's going to do that NEPA, and you have to lay on the table the cards. You've got to lay those cards on the table. You have to talk about, let's take the overall general NEPA. You've got to go in with the history of that ranch. Um, the land management agency people that are doing that, uh, maybe they've been on the job for a year, they don't have any knowledge of your ranch and your terrain and your vegetation and, and your uh, management style with, uh, with your cattle and so forth. So you have to go in with the history and tell them what's happened on the ranch in the past, what has worked, what hasn't worked, what the problems are, what are your goals and objectives, what are the proposed uh, uh, actions uh, that you're looking for, that you're reaching for. Um, so the history is very, vitally important. The history of uh, Forest Service or BLM inspections on the ranch, what, what have they found, what have they revealed, what are the trends in the vegetation that you've discovered from the monitoring, uh, what's, what's going up, what's go going down. Um, the monitoring data that hopefully you've been out there collecting for, for each year uh, on your ranch is important. There you're going to see the trends and so forth. Um, the very, uh, I would bring my AOI documents in that I had that shows uh, what's the, been the status of the cattle and the livestock on the ranch and so forth. What uh, maps that you've used to show what areas of the ranch um, have suffered more during drought, what areas have been overutilized uh, in the past. And those maps and things should be done in conjunction with your government land management agency that uh, it's so beneficial to go out with them when they do an inspection and, and generate those ranch that show where most of the grazing occurred 
and so forth. So where the grazing did not occur, that tells you where you may need to put water, for example. There was no water there, so that goes into the NEPA uh, for, for the future of what you want to do on that ranch. Um, so it's everything you need to go in because if, if you're not the one that's taking that information into them and all that historical and, and collective data that you've uh, gathered, um, who's going to do it? You, you, you have to be the one to do that. Uh, they will then sit down with you and work and say, okay, we can correct this and we can do that for the future and we can uh, make these improvements. Um, you need to change boundary fences or you have problems with that. Um, so it's, it's a wide array of data. It's simply as much information as you can provide um, for, that, uh, for them to get started on, on your ranch. And most important is where you intend to go. What, what are the desired conditions that you want out there on that ranch? Um, so it's um, keep good records. And now with the technology that we have with the computers and so forth, uh, when you're out there in the field, you go with your laptop, take your notes, save it, and uh, all that should go into the process of um, that, that NEPA, whatever the NEPA work is. If it's a simple project that you're going out there for that, and you know you need the NEPA clearances and so forth, um, tell them exactly why and how that water is, why you know that area is the best place to put a well. Um, uh, where you're going to pump to and so forth. I mean, uh, NRCS is excellent in working with you and designing that type of work, but um, you're, you're the person that's been on the ground living with that ranch, and uh, uh, you know what works and what doesn't work and, and where the cattle tend to go and so forth. Um, so it, it's to answer that uh, question about um, how much data you need to bring, you bring every, everything you can and all of your knowledge to that uh, session that you sit down with them.